All right, we are here today uh, to replace the outdoor fan motor and pressure control on stage one of this unit. Um, I'm pretty sure, maybe I did two like short fault finding videos basically. Uh, first time I was here doing a service, noticed that the coil on stage two was iced up because the outdoor fan motor wasn't running. Um, that, from memory, uh, that was the, the contactor. So the coil voltage, uh, the coil between A1, A2 was, was broken. So um, it was receiving a signal to turn on, but it wasn't turning on. So I replaced contactor on that. That was all fine. Um, then by the time we'd come back to replace that, we actually had another service call. Uh, they'd had a, I think we'd had a 36 degree day or something like that. And they were saying that the <clears throat> area that it does was really hot. Now, when showing up, I just assumed that it was because it was missing a stage, but what had actually happened was um, fan motor number two, or sorry, fan motor number one for stage one, um, the windings were open. So that's what we're back here to replace today. Um, while I was here, I also found that the pressure control wasn't cutting out the compressor. So we're gonna pull out all the gas, uh, replace pressure control, uh, and we'll do it in a way in which that in the future, if we ever need to replace the pressure control again, uh, we'll make it nice and easy. Uh, I have actually put this unit up for replacement though. So I've, I've said that due to the age of it, they should go down the path of replacing it. Um, obviously at the moment, I think worldwide, there are pretty long delays on units. Uh, don't quote me, but I think someone said about 20 weeks for a Tempestone unit at the moment. So in the interim, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, repair it. So they have at least a, an air conditioner up and running and then going forward, they'll see if they wanna replace it. But anyway, we'll, um, we'll jump into it. All right, we're making progress. Reclaim bottle on back now, so just pulling that down. Um, so I remember now, they've obviously, like I could just reclaim the gas, do that, uh, like replace it and then back that all out. But then again, you kind of left with the same problem la uh, as the last time. So what I might do is I might just weld in some little uh, quarter inch fittings there so I can put you know a swivel tee on there or even actually just a, um, a Schrader. We'll leave a Schrader in there as well, run that up to the new one um, just to make it easier if we ever need to replace the pressure control again, which like I said, we shouldn't, this thing's pretty old. Pressure control probably lasts the life of the rest of the unit, but just in case, we'll make it easier for ourselves if we have to come back. Um, so in the process now, placing out the fan, got that one over there. Yeah, we'll get into it. So in preparation for reclaiming the gas, I pulled the Schrader out, look at this. Man, it is black, man. Like it's not like it's black, it looks burnt. Interesting. I wonder if uh, it was it was leaking too. So I wonder if I mean no, uh, that that looks like a factory because it's got one over here as well. Maybe they just didn't have the shredder core out when they did it. Who knows? Um, hopefully it's <laughs> not signs of a bigger issue. We'll see how we go. All right, we are good to go. Purged up to there. Scale's good. We'll open this up. don't know how much refrigerant we're supposed to have in this particular stage so I'm gonna call temper zone so apparently now I don't know exactly what the relationship is but you for Brad why you call temper zone um, so I'm gonna call them and suss out if they can give me information on how much refrigerant is supposed to be in this stage so that way what I pull out and then when we charge it back up again is gonna be correct even with removing the cores, you really notice the difference when you're only able to pull from one side. So we're only able, the only Schroeder access you have on this system is your uh, discharge here, which is why we're um, welding in the access fittings with the T's. So we've got access to the low side of the system as well. Um, but yeah, you really notice it, it really starts to drag on. Spewing, we've just worked out that we ordered the 630 uh, mil fan from Zealabeg, <laughs> thumbs up, mate. <laughs> um, they, oh, there was a bit of a miscommunication. There's no details on this unit except for the, the the model and serial, which should have been enough for them. Anyway, they have sent us out the single phase 630 Zealabeg when we needed the three phase. So we can't replace the motor, which is annoying because we've obviously pulled it out. Um, it is what it is. We didn't go, yeah, like we, we worked it out relatively quick, but still kind of a pain in the ass. 
Uh, we can still obviously do the pressure control. I also, in the meantime, found this. Someone's written the factory charge on there. Um, I did just pull that out before and we're just a shy, touch shy under 10 kilo, so we're probably gonna be short too, so fantastic. I reckon it's gonna be that trade, it'll be the problem, um, but we'll see how much we pull out anyway. We'll replace the pressure control, we'll charge it up with what we've got, and then we'll see if they want us to come back with the, and put it in the correct amount, or, or again, like I said, this thing is marked for a replacement. They might just want us to get it up and going and just leave it, so we'll see how we go. Had to get a tub of water too, because the, it didn't trip on HP, but it was getting pretty close and pretty warm, so, you know. All done now, pulled out, yeah, just a touch over 10. Hopefully that Schrader's our only leak, but we will pressure test anyway to put it out. I'm just gonna go ahead and set my pressure control. So usually what I'll try and do, uh, just use a nitro reg. So unfortunately it is now broken, so I can't like set my pressures correctly on here, but what I can do is slowly let it through. So, you know, you can set them on here, obviously, but these are always just, they're always just slightly off them. The older they get, the worse they get. So um, I'll let, you know, I think I'm going to set this to cut in at, um, I should probably have to work out exactly what I'm cut it into, because uh, I'm not using, obviously, this is like a pump down or anything like that. It's just a safety. Um, but, you know, I'll probably get it to cut out at, say, oh, I don't know, minus 10, um, cut in maybe 100, 100 200 K, uh, KPA after that, and then get this one to cut out at maybe like, uh, 70 degrees, so yeah. Basically what I'll do is I'll use my nitro to uh, go up to that pressure, make sure that it cuts in, then and then just do that for both sides, so we'll do that. Okay, so I'm gonna set my cut in at 450, so basically I just control the nitro reg, so I've kind of set it roughly to where it should be, and if I just control the nitro reg now, so I can let a little bit more pressure in, once we get to that 450 mark, we should hear it cut in. So. Okay, well it cut in just there, so it might be a little bit. Anyway, I'll adjust that, but you get the point. I'll do that for the rest of them. Cool, so pressure control set. So I've got it to cut in at, um, oh geez, memory's terrible. Uh, about 450, I think it is. And then cut out at about 250. So in temps, I think that's uh, about four degrees and like minus 12 or whatever. Um, I could probably set that cut in a little higher. Uh, sorry, cut out a little higher, we'll see. Um, and then that one I've set to about 2800 KPA, which is about 68 degrees. So um, again, this is an R22 unit. Um, I think that should be sweet. Uh, I kind of linked up with that, like what that one was doing there, the, the standard one, so that looks about similar, um, but yeah. Cool, got those in, uh, got nitrogen flowing. So we'll uh, weld these in. Welds are done. Um, so I've shown these before, but I'm gonna use the Schrader fitting. Uh, annoyingly, I thought I had in the car the depressor um, capillary lines, but I do not. So yeah, it's a slight bit annoying, but what I'm gonna do is have a Schrader core fitting in there. So at least you still be able to remove the Schrader T, uh, the, the swivel T as well. So I'll write that up there, but there's still a way that you can get, um, I can remove the pressure control if we need to. And all done. Um, so what I was explaining before, I don't know if I explained it very well, but uh, I've got a Schrader core in there because this has a depressor, but I didn't have a capillary line with a depressor. So I'll just confirm that when I write it, you know, people know that the Schrader core is actually in there. Um, but yeah, confirm that lines are going to where they're supposed to, low side to low side, high to high. Um, yeah, we'll now put some pressure in this thing and make sure we've got no leaks. Right, started the pressure test now. Um, we'll monitor that for the next little while and make sure that that doesn't drop. Yep, 13 and a half with no drop. I'm pretty happy, we'll get this thing on back now. Yeah, fairly confident that that's uh, leaking Schrader is our only issue. I don't know if I showed it on camera, but you could physically hear it leaking. So pretty happy, yeah, we'll get this thing on back. We've currently got the unit on back now. Um, it's, what time is it? It's uh, about 10 to 12, so we're gonna have some lunch now, leave this thing on back over, over lunch, come back and see how it goes. It seems like it's already tracking pretty well. Again, I'm pulling through my gauges, so um, if I feel the need, I'll put the my Testo probe on, um, my back stat on just to make sure. But yeah, like I said, the, the, this job is one of those ones where we're, we're basically just doing it to get them up and running um, in the interim until we can come back and replace it. So yeah, like I'm, I'll still do my, <laughs> my best but you know within reason I guess look it's pulled down all right um, that's actually pretty good to be honest with you I mean it could still rise anyway uh, but honestly I'm happy with that uh, the plan of attack here 
just going to open that while I'm talking anyway. The plan of attack will be basically, because we're not getting this unit up and running, uh, there's no real good way to charge this because either way I'm dumping it straight into the compressor. Um, so I'm just going to dump the gas in there as much as I can, um, turn power back on, the unit's not going to run. Basically this will have, you know, two, uh, a week, a week and a bit depending on how long um, until we can get the new fan motor, the correct fan motor. That Sun Peter will basically will be running that entire time, which means that we're not going to come back and start up with liquid in the sump anyway. So we'll get that underway. So just labelled it a fair bit. So I decided to actually go through the high side. Um, yeah, just decided to go through the high side. So charging up now, it's coming out pretty quick. Looking all right. So about a kilo still left in that bottle. Um, like I said, we can't get this compressor from running anyway, so I might leave that here. Um, and then I will talk to them about whether or not they want us to come back and fill up the remainder of the charge. Like I said, this is kind of like a temporary thing. So they might be like, if it's gonna get us through, leave it. I'll leave that up to them. Um, I'll recommend that they put it up obviously to um, add the extra five kgs, but uh, we shall see. So leak tested everything, everything's looking pretty good. Um, when I took my gauge off this line, it was a little, yeah, the oil was a little black, eh? But um, I mean, there's really not much we can do about that. Uh, but yeah, leak tested everything, everything's looking good. Um, we got uh, 9.3 kilos out of that bottle. So I'm just gonna leave it here. So when I do come back and get the, um, get the compressor up and running, I'll be able to maybe suck, you know, another 500, 800 grams out of that thing, who knows? And then again, if I bring another bottle, then we can do that. So. I might leave that one. This will, this will be this one we're just packing up now. Um, yeah, I've been next to this all day. It's been awesome. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. We're just packing up now, so I'm gonna leave it here. I might either just publish one, publish this one, because who knows when we come back with this van? It might be a week or two. It might not even be me coming back. So maybe I'll hold on to the footage, and if we do come back, then you will see that after this clip. <laughs> if not, that's the end. <laughs>